Hi, my name is Evan, and in this video I'm going to go over the Chrome browser that comes included on your ProColor 3 panel, and some tips on how to effectively use that in your classroom. So you're probably already familiar with Chrome on the computer. If not, it's a web browser, much like what you've used on your phone or your computer at home. If you just tap the Chrome icon, you'll load up this home screen here, and this should look fairly familiar to you. Of course, we have a Google search here, as well as some frequently visited websites. Up here at the top, we have a web address if you want to type in uh, location. So once you tap a text field, either in the address bar or the Google search bar, you'll notice this keyboard comes up. Um, it's up to you, but I prefer this keyboard to be a little higher. I don't like bending down and trying to touch down here. It's also a great idea to move this keyboard out of the way of children. If you have small kids in your classroom, you may not want them grabbing the keyboard whenever they feel like it. So you'll see these little gray lines on the side there. Those are touch handles. You can grab those with your finger and move that keyboard wherever you need. So now that it's a little bit easier to type, let's go to a website. You'll see this all looks fairly familiar, and you should be able to sign in with your username and password to all of these sites that you frequently visit. The panel here is capable of remembering your username and password for commonly used sites, so you don't have to sign in and out every single time. There's also a bookmarks feature that will help you access these sites more quickly when you're teaching in the classroom. Up here, you'll notice on the top right a star that when you press it will turn blue, now that's been saved to your bookmarks. And to access your bookmarks, if you tap the three dots there just at the top, you'll notice a bookmarks option. That'll pull up a list of whatever websites you've added to your list. So put some commonly accessed things, maybe Google Classroom if you use that, maybe some educational materials you visit frequently, or a good place to download materials. Up here on the left, you'll notice this plus icon. Tapping that will create a new tab so you can have multiple sites open at once and quickly and easily switch between them. I find one of the best benefits of having a panel like this in the classroom is the ability to load up educational simulations or models online and then mark them up, annotate them in real time to help explain what's going on to the students. So let's take a look at that in the browser here. If I tap one of my bookmarks, you can visit this site as well to follow along. Feel free to use any of these resources. So now this is showing a neuron, but if you're not familiar with neurobiology, you might need a little further explanation of what's going on here. Of course, we want to give our students some clarity and explain the processes here. So this is a great opportunity to use some of these tools on the sidebar that work really well with Chrome. I'm going to use the pen tool here, tapping that will freeze the screen here. You'll see all the animations have stopped. And now I can use the stylus here to start marking up this diagram so I can clearly explain the differences between a sodium gate, a sodium channel, talk about the directions that ions can flow in and out of cells. So that's just one example of the many ways these annotation tools work with Chrome, but that's definitely something you might want to try using a simulation or a website that's more relevant to your own instruction. Now sometimes you'll want to write things on the whiteboard while referring to a video or a simulation like this, and the best way to do that is to use the split screen feature on the panel. I'll show you how to get into that. You can actually load the Note app on one side and the Chrome app on another. So if you go here to the sidebar, this icon right here, this blue circle with what looks like two screens, if you tap that icon, you'll see here a list of running apps. These are little tabs that are open here, and selecting them will switch to an app of your choice. Now we can also use these to do a split screen. So if you touch and hold on the bar here, you'll see that animation has opened up two side panels that say drag here. Let's try that. So now Note is going to cover half the screen, and on this half I can choose what I want to display. I'll put Chrome up there. So now that simulation is still running, everything's working just fine there, and I can still use the Note app here to start writing as I would to explain some things.
So I can use the Note app here to give a little bit more detail, a little more explanation. Another example would be something like solving math problems, where you could have practice problems on one side, have students come up to the board and solve them on the other side. Really, whatever works for you and in, in your instruction, I'm sure there's plenty of opportunities for you to have this split screen view. All right, the last thing I'll show you here with Chrome is how to download something and use it in a different application like Note, for instance. Here I have a website pulled up that has a nice diagram that I'd like to use. If I just touch and hold on that image, it will give me a range of options here, one of which is download. I can go ahead and start downloading that, and now I will have that stored to the storage in the panel here. If I go home here and I open Finder, you'll see a range of folders here. The Downloads folder is here, and you'll see that JPEG that I just added right there. All right, well that sums up using the Chrome application as well as the split screen function and the annotation tools to really get at some interactive and very detailed instructional methods on the panel here.